Hey, this is Jamie from Capsule Computers, and today we are reviewing Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege from Ubisoft Montreal. The game is available now for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. As of the recording of this video, the game costs $59.99 US. So it's been about 7 years since we've seen a serious Rainbow Six title. What started out as a realistic tactical shooter based on Tom Clancy's novel of the same name, the franchise has been watered down a good bit since Raven Shield. After wandering around video game purgatory for quite some time, Rainbow Six Patriots was finally given the axe and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege rose from its ashes. The game is focused almost exclusively on multiplayer and prominently features destructible surfaces. Siege is a return to a more tactical shooting experience. While it was fun, Rainbow Six Vegas just didn't feel much like a Rainbow Six game to me. With only one life per round and high levels of damage, Siege is a tense affair and brings back the feeling of vulnerability to the series. The game pits barricaded defenders against attackers who maintain the element of surprise. Each game kicks off in earnest with the initial breach, where attackers attempt to use the element of surprise to get the upper hand. Doors, windows, and drywall surfaces can be destroyed to create openings for the attacking team to swarm in on the defenders. The destruction system works really well for a game like Siege. Maps for a 5v5 game like Siege are not usually big to begin with and boil down to two or three choke points. In Siege, defenders usually have to deal with eight or more potential entry points, but can choose to whittle them down to a more manageable three or four using reinforced barricades. The result are short, intense firefights that make every match a little different from the last. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege has three modes. Multiplayer is a 5v5 PvP mode that is comprised of short rounds with teams switching between attacking and defending. The first team to three points is declared the winner. The three modes in multiplayer are defuse a bomb, hostage rescue, and secure the area. Unfortunately, each of these three modes are only slightly different from the other. Terrorist Hunt, on the other hand, is the fan favorite co-op mode that pits a team of five against an unknown number of AI enemies. Terrorist Hunt Classic will have players clearing the map of hostiles, while the remaining three modes are co-op modifications of the hostage and bomb modes for multiplayer. There isn't much of a single player or story mode in Siege. Disappointingly, Situation Mode serves as a single player tutorial that overstays its welcome by about seven missions. Considering the game is supposed to be focused on team play, forcing players through 10 solo missions as an extended tutorial seems like a pretty pointless thing to me. Now, the real bonus for slogging through such a long tutorial is the mission Article 5, which is a story co-op mission. It's a real shame that the developers opted to drag out Situation Mode as long as they did because I think trimming it down to three missions and then turning the remaining seven into a short story arc along the lines of Article 5 would have made Siege's content more well-rounded and much more fulfilling. As a multiplayer experience, Siege is an intense one. There's great tension just moments before the attacking team breaches and the violence begins in earnest. Communication and teamwork is a must for both modes. Teams who split up in an uncoordinated fashion will get stomped on by the AI or a team that talks to each other on VoIP. It's as simple as that. And that's where lies the most annoying part about Siege. If you don't have friends, you're going to have to bank on finding some really friendly and communicative players in matchmaking. Siege is still in a bit of a state of flux, and I wish Ubisoft chose to continue development a little longer than to push the game out on December 1st. There are still some balance issues that need to be ironed out as of the recording of this video, mainly how shields are being balanced and with some operator abilities being way more important than others. There are also some bugs that need to get ironed out. Personally, I ran into several errors that dropped me out of my party's matchmaking or simply got the game stuck on a, what I assume to be a really long invisible loading screen. The audiovisual experience is excellent. The music, the sound effects, and the voice acting are all top notch. The sound effects are particularly well done, giving headphone users a definite leg up for picking out incoming enemies. I'm a huge fan of the art design. I really prefer the fact that they chose a more retro look for the counter-terrorist units instead of the standard multicam getup that every special operations and counter-terrorist unit seems to use these days. If you're a fan of tactical shooters that don't go into simulation territory, or if you're looking for an intense FPS to play with your friends, I can absolutely recommend Rainbow Six Siege. However, the bugs, the balance issues, and the need for more content makes it a little harder to recommend if you're just going to play on your own with some random people on matchmaking. I'm giving the game 7.5 capsules out of 10. If you want to read our full review, be sure to check out the link in the description or in the video's card. I hope to see you soon. This is Jamie from Capsule Computers, signing off.